Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, October 1st, 2016. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Here's Hurricane Matthew in the Central Caribbean Sea. A lot has been going on with the storm. Last night it continued to intensify from a Category 4 into a Category 5 storm, and then overnight some weakening did occur, which is normally expected when you get extreme storms of Category 5 intensity. That's the top end of the scale. They don't really get much stronger than Matthew got very often last night, and usually when that happens, uh, the inner core dynamics start to get a little bit unstable for the first time. When a hurricane is first intensified to this strength, it usually has to undergo an adjustment because the storm will start to enlarge and the eye wall will start to shrink. And right now, Matthew's eye is very small, about six miles in diameter as of the last recon aircraft reports. And when the eye gets that small, it's generally hard to maintain. You usually get an outer band that starts to form into a secondary eye wall outside of the inner eye wall inside and that configuration usually induces some weakening and then an eyewall replacement cycle where the inner eye diminishes and disintegrates and the outer eyewall takes over. Normally that's the case. It looks like Matthew will eventually uh, have one of these occur but throughout the day it has basically maintained a pretty steady category 4 intensity with winds of about 150 miles per hour so this is still an extreme storm um, and it has really been kind of sitting around today. You can kind of see the eye has gone in a circle during the last six or seven hours. This is a cyclonic loop that it's taken. It's also called a trochoidal oscillation, and it's basically making no progress westward anymore. All this has really changed, perhaps, in the forecast in the short term is that it is not getting over here before turning to the north. So this is reducing somewhat the odds of a direct hit on Jamaica. It's not impossible still, but this may begin to move more north-northwest toward the gap between Jamaica and Haiti, or over the tip of Haiti itself, more so than the island of Jamaica. So the best case scenario here would be it for, for it to split the uprights here and not make a direct landfall on either island, but at this point it's still uncertain given that the motion is very erratic and a major hurricane like this can wobble around as you can see here. So even when it's up here, some slight wobbles in track can bring it much closer to one or, uh, or the other of these land areas. Now here's the recon observation showing that cyclonic motion, a bit of an eastward drift and then a northward drift uh, back toward the northwest is assumed to begin in a few hours here and eventually a motion off to the north-northwest should ensue. And you can see lots of passes again, so a lot of tangled wind barbs here, but in general a very strong hurricane. Again, winds up to 150 miles per hour and the pressure is still down near 940. So this is still uh, just about as low of a pressure as it's had during its life. So the winds might be a little bit lower than last night, but this is really still at peak strength so far for Matthew's life cycle. Here is a microwave pass from uh, NRL. And what this shows you is it's sort of like a radar picture. You can think of it sort of like that. That's not quite correct. But here's the inner eye wall here. You can see the eye. It's nice and small right there, but you can see it's not as well defined. The south wall is open at the moment. This pass is only a couple hours old as of the making of this video. And then note this large band on the western side. And it's not wrapped around either, but this could be the beginnings of a secondary larger eye wall. And if this were to close off, it could start choking off the inner eye wall and we could get a double eye wall for a little while. And that would kick off uh, one of those eye wall replacement cycles I was talking about. And so Matthew right now, although the inner eye has remained intact today, it may not stay that way for very long. Uh, and given how small it is at six miles in diameter, uh, it's probably going to end up succumbing to one of these larger bands wrapping around and forming a secondary wall that's larger in diameter pretty soon here. Uh, so again, this will cause fluctuations in intensity. Normally these uh, cause weakening initially, but then once the eye wall replacement is complete, they can re-strengthen after the new eye begins to contract and clear out. Uh, so there are some fluctuations expected, um, but right now Matthew is pretty steady state at the moment. Here's the water vapor imagery showing that, again, expansive outflow continues in the face of what has still been some west-southwesterly shear over the Caribbean. We still have this broad trough over the Gulf of Mexico. It's now beginning to thin a little bit, so from here on out the shear will start to decrease as Matthew moves northward. But so far we've continued to have some general west-southwest flow over the Caribbean, but Matthew has not been adversely affected by it so much. We can see some evidence of the shear impacting the storm on its left-hand side, especially earlier this morning. We saw very little thunderstorm activity on the western side of the storm. This is a combination of the shear, 
pushing a lot of this thunderstorm activity to the east and also of the dry air that is on this left hand side. You can see a lot of these outflow boundaries that we talked about yesterday, these low level arc clouds where thunderstorms are collapsing in the region I've circled here. This indicates dry air and also when you have shear out of the westerly direction it tends to push that upper level dry air toward the western edge of the outer core of the storm and so some of that core has been periodically eroded today which is part of the reason the eye has been less distinct is because there are perhaps some small bits of dry air getting wrapped in periodically into the storm's core. This may continue as long as the shear is present but it is going to decrease over the next few days and we'll have to see whether more of this dry air gets wrapped in or eventually mixed out. Give it long enough and this air will re-moisten as it circulates around the storm as long as it's not getting resupplied from somewhere else. So there's just a couple of little things that could still uh, limit Matthew from time to time but it still remains a Cat 4 storm regardless of that. Here's a sounding from Kingston, Jamaica, and this is just to show you that at the upper levels, this is the southerly flow coming from Matthew. This was this morning sounding. You can see the cirrus clouds coming up out of the south. That's that southerly wind way up here at the top of the atmosphere. If you go down a little bit more, you see the west-southwest flow just below that at about 200-250 millibars. That is the shearing flow undercutting the outflow from the west, indicating some of the shear that's still impinging upon uh, Matthew's west side, but you also notice that the shear layer is rather shallow. By the time you get down to 300 millibars, you no longer have the westerly flow. So this is a pretty weak shear layer now, and it's not going to last much longer. So again, conditions aloft will actually improve for Matthew over the next few days. Now, getting back to the long-term forecast for this, again, we have a trough over the Gulf of Mexico. We have a ridge to the north. So there's a high here, a low here, the only path is in between the two. So we've, as we've expected for some days now, this is going to move in general north and then north of the Caribbean into the Bahamas. The exact uh, location where it moves through the Greater Antilles is still the concern for Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and the southern Bahamas. What we have seen over the last day or so is the track forecasts, forecasts have shifted just a little bit east from where they were yesterday over the eastern part of Jamaica to now a little bit closer to the western tip of Haiti instead. Right now, much of them are still sort of in between these two land masses, but a slight shift away from Jamaica has occurred. Now, these models have been uh, flipping back and forth over the last several days, so it's not yet a guarantee whether any of these areas could not see a direct hit. All three of these countries could, Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba, but the short-term trend is a little bit closer to Haiti and so really all three of these countries really need to be prepared for a serious hurricane as regardless of intensity fluctuations over the next couple of days Matthew will remain severely intense and again beyond the wind uh, surf and inland flooding especially over these mountainous regions is going to be devastating in some areas and so this is going to be a huge problem no matter what it is guaranteed for these three countries at this point that this is going to be a big deal so definitely stay prepared for that um, looking out ahead of the next few days. This gets into here around Monday and then Tuesday it moves up into the Bahamas. Now it's going to cross over either Jamaica and or Cuba or the tip of Haiti. There's really no way to weasel through here. It's very hard to do without hitting land. So the mountains are going to disrupt the inner core of Matthew for a while. This usually knocks it down a fair bit so it will likely weaken a category or two as it comes up into the Bahamas. However, this is not cause for feeling safe as this could still be say a category two even when it weakens and then even after that point it will be moving slowly up through the Bahamas in an environment that is conducive for some intensification. This is the environment on the GFS out to day four and look at this giant upper level high here in blue and the anticyclonic clockwise flow over the hurricane. This is about as good as it gets for a hurricane uh, aloft. So this is a very favorable pattern for Matthew to intensify after moving into the Bahamas. So even in a weakened state after crossing Cuba and or Haiti, it could just strengthen again while moving slowly up through the Bahamas. So this is a big time storm coming for the island chain. Again, it's not exactly clear which of these islands could see the worst impacts yet. This is still day four. Uh, four days out is still a long time uh, to see little changes with the storm in its track and uh, when it will arrive here. So uh, again, be prepared. This whole area here is almost guaranteed to get, uh, to get nailed by Matthew at some point over the next three or four days. Beyond that, things are still, still amazingly complicated. This is the 500 millibar pattern at the same time, day four. This is Wednesday afternoon. This is after it's come across, and this is what it looks like. This is roughly at the steering level 
for the storm. These are the winds that would usually steer it, and there's so many features going on, it's still difficult to say whether this is going to impact the United States or not. Uh, just to run you through it, again, we have a trough off in the Gulf, which continues to back to the southwest. We've talked about as this gets farther away, it allows this ridge to the east of the hurricane to try to build a little bit farther to the northwest, and so there's a tug that the hurricane feels toward the northwest in this position. However, we also have the remnants of this upper low that's been over the Ohio Valley for the last few days. That comes east, it ends up in here, and we have this strung out area of troughiness, which is limiting how much this ridge can build. Depending on how strong this troughiness is, this ridge could either build far enough in such that it forces the storm into the Carolinas or somewhere along the southeast U.S. coast, or the trough could be strong enough that the ridge never really builds in and the hurricane just recurves offshore like this. In some extreme cases, We've even seen some model forecasts build this ridge in so much that it forces the hurricane into the coast of Florida. That cannot yet be ruled out, so Florida, keep an eye on this as well. Um, this is really not something that we can parse out and figure out which scenario is more likely because it has been changing so much over the last few days. Not only do we have the one two, three features I just mentioned, but we also have this trough coming into the Great Plains. Its character has been changing from run to run on some of these models, and unfortunately this is not the kind of trough that may necessarily just blast in from the west and take this away safely out to sea. Instead, this trough is lifting out pretty quickly on some of these recent forecasts, which allows this ridge to stay uh, stout in here and perhaps force the hurricane pretty close to the eastern seaboard on its way out to sea, which could result in a landfall or close to it on some of these forecasts. So again, we've had a variety of little changes going on in an extremely complicated pattern uh, with many, many moving parts. And there are a lot of things that have to happen in a certain order at a certain, um, you know, in a certain way to get this hurricane to actually come into the United States, but that door is still open. And so while a lot of forecasts continue to keep this out to sea, it's a very close call at this point, and it's not yet clear whether or not the United States will be directly impacted. And don't forget, if this is a major hurricane, it doesn't have to be onshore to bring tropical storm or hurricane conditions to the coast. It can be 100, 200 miles offshore and still cause a big problem. So this is something that folks in the southeast U.S., the eastern seaboard, should keep an eye on. Um, it's not an imminent worry yet. We're still talking about four, five, six, seven days from potentially impacting the country but it is something that you should be ready for just in case, have a plan ready to go in case it comes your direction, but right now we don't know very much about how likely this is to directly impact the country. All we do know for sure is that the Bahamas, Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti are going to get the brunt of this storm through Tuesday and Wednesday, and then beyond that we're still working out the details. So this is the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing, again, Category 4 Matthew, 150 mile per hour winds moving very slowly right now, but north-northwest movement expected to resume, and little change in strength, perhaps some weakening, but some fluctuations in intensity are possible given the eye wall replacement cycle that is likely imminent. And then passing somewhere right now is expected between Jamaica and Haiti, but really anywhere between these two islands. Uh, the hurricane could track. Right now there's hurricane warnings for both coastlines, Jamaica and Haiti, hurricane watches for Cuba and the north coast of Haiti. So all three of these countries in here are going to get heavy rain, flooding, mudslides, the biggest problem by far, and of course near the coast a major hurricane force winds are possible in some of these areas. So one of the biggest storms we've seen in this area in years is going to come through, so please be prepared for this serious hurricane. And then on up into the Bahamas where you can see strengthening is forecast again after it moves off of the mountains of Cuba or Haiti. It will weaken, but it will re-strengthen after that most likely once it starts moving north. And these, these points are a day apart. This is a 48-hour period between day 3 and 5 here. This is a slow-moving hurricane through the Bahamas. That's a big deal and will definitely be a dangerous, dangerous situation for this whole area of the world. Again, beyond that, who knows? Um, Florida, southeast coast, be watchful, stay informed, um, no need for imminent worry just yet, but keep an eye on things as we continue to march toward next week. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.